And now we look at question six, ladies and gentlemen. So they say to us, we've got a commuter train that passes a passenger platform at a constant speed of 40 meters per second. The train horn is sounded at its characteristic frequency of 320 hertz. They say, take the speed of sound in air to be 340 meters per second. Now they say, first of all, state the Doppler effect in words. Now, please note this. You must be able to state this, right? We say it is the apparent change in the observed frequency that is due to the relative motion between the source and the observer. All right, so please be able to mention this. Right, now let's go on to the next question. They say, calculate the frequency heard by a person on the platform as the train approaches the platform. So what do we have? We've got a train, okay, that's approaching a platform, okay? And we've got a stationary observer there. So we know the velocity of the observer is zero. The velocity of the train is 40 meters per second. And we know that the train is emitting a sound with 320 hertz, right? So that's the frequency of the source. So we want to find out the frequency of the listener. Now, in this case, ladies and gents, please, if you don't know how to do this, right, I've got a full video on the Doppler effect, right? Please make sure that you always use the, um, the equation or the formula as it appears on your uh, data sheet, right? Now note, in this case, we already know that the velocity of the listener, the speed of the listener is zero. So that changes our equation or formula to V because VL is zero, right? So that's V divided by V and VS. Now remember, when the train is moving towards us, we are expecting that the observed frequency should be higher than the frequency of the source. So what we're going to do is have this as an improper fraction. So that's FL, that's V into V minus. Now remember, in this case, we want the denominator to be smaller than the uh, numerator. So that's going to be minus times uh, frequency of the source. Now let's substitute. You know the speed of sound is given as 340. This is going to be 340 minus 40 meters per second. And this is multiplied by 320. Right, without any further ado, ladies and gents, let's try and obtain that value. So we've got 340 divided by 300, right? And this is multiplied by 320. Okay, I get a, a frequency of 362.67 hertz. Right, so that is going to be the frequency that is observed in that case. Right, now let's go on to the next question. They say to us the wavelength detected by a person on the platform as the train approaches. Right, now, ladies and gents, you need to remember, we're going to use the formula V is equal to F multiplied by lambda. However, every time that you're going to use V, this is not the, f uh, the velocity of the source or the listener, but it is rather the speed of sound in a medium. So the speed of sound in this medium, so the speed of sound in A is 340, right? The frequency, we already found it to be 362.67, and we want the wavelength. So we're going to divide by 362.67, on either side, 0.67, and so our wavelength now becomes, okay, so I'm going to take that value, uh, 340 divided by 362.67, and I get a wavelength of 0 0.94, and remember that wavelength is measured in meters. All right, and that is how the cookie crumbles. Right, so let's go on to the next one. So they give us there a motorcycle. So I'm just going to remove this stuff over here. Right, so they give us a motorcycle, right? And that they say it starts from rest, okay? 
So remember in this case, this question that we're about to answer has nothing to do with the previous question. So that's why I'm actually going to remove this. So they say that the motorbike accelerates along a straight line at 2.81 meters per second squared. The speed of sound in air is 343, right? So note that it's not the same as it was before. Right, now they say to us a siren uh, at the starting point remains stationary, okay? They say use the, a table or rather a suitable calculation to prove that the distance that the motorcycle has traveled when the driver hears the frequency of the siren at 90% right, of the value it has when the uh, motorcycle is stationary is 209.34. Now, ladies and gents, what's actually happening here? Let's suppose we've got, you know, wherever the siren is coming from, okay? So there is something that is emitting a sound with a siren, okay? So the person who is, who has the motorbike, okay, now you guys know that I can't draw to save my life, okay, so there's our motorbike person, okay, right, so they're sitting there, rummer, okay, okay, so there's our motorbiker, all right, so in order for them to hear the sound at 90% of its value, so which means this is a frequency that is actually less than the frequency that is emitted. So whatever the frequency of the source is, right, the biker is actually hearing the frequency of the listener is actually 90%. Right now, remember, if I say 90%, that, that's 90 over 100, right? So that's 90 over 100 multiplied by Fs. So that gives us 0 0.9 Fs. Now, the only way that the frequency, the observed frequency is less than the frequency of the source is if the biker is actually moving away from the source, okay? So now, they want us to prove that to hear the sound at 90% of the frequency of the source, the biker would have traveled a distance of 209.34 meters, okay? So here's what I'm going to do, ladies and gents. Let's do this. Can we find out what the speed of the biker is at this point, okay? So the velocity or the speed of the listener and in this case, I'm going to do this. I am going to find out what the distance is when I found out, find out, remember, where did the biker start, right? The biker started where the siren is, right? So the velocity of the biker at this point was zero meters per second. Remember, I'm not saying this is the velocity of the source, right? Of course, it is zero, uh, but the velocity of the biker in this case was zero, right? We'll get to that in just a little while. So I'm going to save a uh, frequency of the listener, right? Again, we're going to do our Doppler effect equation, V plus minus Vs times Fs. Now remember that our listener, or rather our source is stationary, right? So I have V plus minus Vl over Remember that the source is stationary, so this is divided by V, right, multiplied by Fs. Now, I need to find out, do I use plus or minus, right? Now, remember, I want the value to be less, right, the frequency of the listener to be less than the frequency of the source. So this must be a proper fraction. As I said to you, if you don't understand this, go and watch the full video on this section. Right, so the speed of the source, of the listener, in this case, we actually are trying to find that. But I know that I want this to be a proper fraction, so that means that this must be actually a minus there. Right, so now let's actually substitute. We want the observed frequency to be 0 0.9 times 
the frequency of the source. This is 343 minus VL divided by V, right? So that it becomes a proper fraction. Okay, if you multiply by a proper fraction, oh sorry, divided by 343 over there, right? Multiplied by FS. Now, ladies and gents, you can actually divide both sides by FS. What I do on the left, I will do on the right. So that cancels with that. And I'm left with just 0 0.9 on the other side, right? So that cancels out. Now, remember, this is 0 0.9 over 1. So now what I can actually do is cross multiply. So I'm going to say 343 minus VL times 1. That's 343 minus VL, right? And this is equal to 0 0.9 times 343, right? Now, ladies and gents, I'm going to take that value to the other side. So I've got minus VL, which will be 0 0.9 times 343, right? Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. Minus... 343 right so let's take that that's 0 0.9 times 343 minus 343 and that gives me negative 34.3 that's minus vl and so the speed of the listener in this case would be 34.3 meters per second all right now that i've found the speed of the bike right at this point, I can now find out what is the distance that it would have traveled for it to reach this speed. Remember now, I have got the, the initial velocity of the bike. I've got the final velocity of the bike. I've got the acceleration and I'm simply looking for the distance. Right, so I'm going to use the equation of motion Vf squared which is vi squared plus 2 times a delta x. The final velocity there is the one that we got, 34.3. This is squared. Initial velocity is 0. And the acceleration of the bike is 2.81. And we want to find out what the distance is. Right, I hope this does not distract you. Right, so now all we simply do is let's take all of that. Okay, so uh, 2 times uh, 2.81. Okay, and we're going to divide that entire thing there. Now, let's just go straight to the answer. So that's 34.3 all squared. And this is going to be divided by 2 times... 2.81 okay so there we go delta x is exactly as they said 2.209.34 uh, meters and that's how we get to the answer that they wanted right i hope you you truly understood this question ladies and gents really quite a remarkable question right and uh, let's move on to the very next one